Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just couldn't throw this recording up without sharing a few words um, of gratitude and just extreme appreciation to all of those who showed up this morning with the letter. Um, it was a very heartfelt um, hour that we spent together and reflecting and also hearing some amazing experiences of what this understanding has done for so many different people. Um, so I hope you truly enjoy our first Letters to see at the event. I also wanted to share, because I don't know if it made it into the video or not, because I was late on recording, um, was the whole idea behind what I wanted to do with the event. And that was to hold a few of these events. And through voluntary submission of some of those letters, we would bind them and put them together in a published book. And the proceeds from that book will go to many of the community projects in which we're already doing. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate everybody. Have the day you deserve. And welcome to Letters with Sid. <laughs> all right. Um, and so how it all works is we will just basically raise your digital hand. We'll call on you and you'll read your letter. I did want you to write it because it was something around that. So Sid had this video in which he wrote a letter to Oprah Winfrey. And he wrote it to her talking about this understanding and what it could possibly do. And he wanted her help in getting it out in the world. For some reason, that particular video always stuck with me. And so it was a part of what prompted this idea. So to kind of give you where I really want to take this entire project is this is the first of four letters to Sid events. Everybody that reads a letter that will be comfortable with it will submit that letter to me. We'll clean it up. Make sure you will, you'll clean it up, grammatically correct and all that. And I'm going to bind them and get them published in a book called Letters to See It. And I'm at that point, proceeds and things that come from the book will go to other community projects and things that we want to continue doing um, as me, as a part of the Three Feet Global community. Um, but I wanted it to, to set a marker. Um, for two reasons. One of the things that I hear from uh, the privilege of being around first, a lot of first generation mentors is Sid often wondered what would happen to this understanding after he passed. And I think these are unique opportunities and we would just get to reflect on that. Um, here we are, and I won't go into it because part of that is in my letter, but here we are today. Um, and I don't think we have any, if I'm not mistaken, is there anybody on this call who is ever physically in a room with Sydney Banks? Yeah, look at that. So that means all of us are a byproduct that some sort of people he had coached, student, mentor, taught, or even one of their mentor talk. <laughs> and that's just a beautiful thing in itself of this, this understanding spreading. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all it is. Very simple, very, we're just going to go around the room, uh, read your letter, um, and, and then we'll reflect for a minute in it, not, not discuss it, because it's, it's your letter. Um, and then, and we'll see what that feeling feels like. And so I'll read my letter. Any questions? First, any questions? Everybody's good? Okay. Hey, Azul. Dear Sid, it's me, Rob. I feel like I do know you, actually, because of the love I feel from those you've taught and mentored. Also, I feel like I know you because of the feeling of a shared experience behind the words when I hear you. I'm new to the principles. It's not really something I fully, fully understand, to be truthfully, but I was pointed in this way, and it was articulated to me, and I learned how to love myself. I feel like I know you. I really do. I can hear you in my shared experience and we've never even met. This changed my life. For instance, Sid, I'm no longer afraid of my experience. No, like really, I'm serious. In 2014, 2015, I was facing some of the darkest times of my life and I attempted to read every book that was out there in hopes that it would fix me or at least put me back to a manner in which I was functional in public or society. I searched and I searched and I searched. 
And I don't know if I would really call it a search because I was just existing. I would really call it something more like just, just flailing because I didn't even know there was more. That stayed my life until I met a man named Michael Neal. Now you've met, met Michael Neal before, but he's my mentor. He's a 3P coach and he shares this understanding as well. He woke up my heart. I lived so much in my head, Sid, that I was unaware that living by my heart, it really exists. For me, it was an immediate truth and it allowed me to see things very quickly. One of those things I was able to see is that I wasn't broken. Second was I actually was connected to my, the creative energy behind life. Wow. I'll admit, scared shit out of me at first, but I knew it was true. I didn't know what to do with that for a while though, because I really wanted to hold on to those old beliefs, not because I really liked them necessarily, but because having them, I understood them. That all of my experiences of life were wrapped in them. My old beliefs were tied to them, but I couldn't. It was something about this freshness, this authenticity, this compassion, this love that I would feel whenever I was in this conversation. I even learned said that anything is possible, anything. And that all of the limiting factors I had in my life were created by my thoughts. Who would have ever thought? It was like I was being handed the key to life. And I'm so thankful to you for that. But I'm also thankful to him. And now I realize this. I know I mentioned Michael Neal as the guy who taught me. But since you don't know him, he's a result of George Pransky and some others that you had shared this understanding with. And I know you know George fairly well. I only share that, sir, is because I spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time with people who were with you. And they often said that you wonder what would happen to this understanding after you physically left us. Now, I don't know what happens on the underside of physical death. So I don't know if you're up there looking down on us or, you know, how that really works. So I'll just use the military in me and report the state of the community. Since you've passed, the three principles are now global, Sid. Yes, mind, thought, and consciousness, as we explain it today, January 28, 2022, is being taught all over the world. Those that learn closest from you, or as we refer to as the elders, first generation, are straight kicking butt. They are some of the kindest teachers, facilitators, and most importantly, best human beings you'll find on earth. There's no signs of anyone stopping from helping humanity in their needless suffering, as you mentioned in the book, Second Chance. I'm actually see it right now, reading this letter out loud, in a room of people, some of whom I met and some of whom I don't even know, but we're only here because of you. We come from all different places, all walks of life. And the only thing binding us together is our understanding that we are love. With that, I say thank you, sir, for pointing us to the truth about how the human experience works. I love you. And again, I'm Rob. All right, Joe, then Greg. Hi, Rob. Hi, everyone. Hey, Joe. Okay, so I've got, dear Sydney Banks, I write this letter of thanks for the divine message that you brought to the world that has not only transformed my life, but countless others. Before coming across your teachings of the three principles and the truth of who we truly are as both human and spiritual beings, I had experienced a life of severe mental and physical suffering since childhood. I had an extremely negative attitude in always expecting the worst to happen and had pretty much given up hope that I had any chance in life. I was told by doctors that I would never recover and had been on medication for over 25 years. I felt a victim of both circumstance and God and that all my potential was wasted. It appeared that my best I could hope for would be to let my life run itself out and maybe get another shot next time. After tapering myself off of medication, I was fortunate to be guided by my intuition to pick up and read a book by Mara Gleason Olson in March 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic lockdown. From reading this book, I discovered your Hawaii lectures and heard you mentioning how we are all living in mental health but don't realise it. I then had my first real big shift and felt a feeling of hope that I had not experienced since childhood. I was totally hooked 
and wanted to watch and read as much of your material as I could find. I read The Enlightened Gardener, and although I didn't really understand much of what you were talking about, I felt a feeling and surge of positive energy that I never realised was within me. My mind began to settle down, and I started to see more and more of my true nature. I then had a spiritual awakening that although it was a beautiful experience at the time, my ego mind fought back and I experienced a few weeks of mental hell. With the assistance of some of your personal students, a couple of three principles trained facilitators and listening to your recordings for virtually the whole day and night for around three weeks, I was saved from my mind falling into the abyss. Eventually, through the insights that were sparked by listening to your recordings, I was able to incrementally slow my personal mind and come back to my true nature. I feel grateful that you decided to dedicate your life to sharing the gift you were fortunate to be shown by the divine energy that is often referred to as God. I fully appreciate the sacrifice you and your family made as you traveled the world and taught how everyone can break free from their self-limiting beliefs. I can only begin to imagine how difficult and frustrating it must have been at times when trying to share truth to a world that was largely unable to hear and see, but also rewarding when seeing the profound changes in people who were suffering. You were and still are an inspiration in never giving up hope and staying positive right to your last day in your physical form. Not only are your teachings an inspiration to the world, you yourself fully embodied and demonstrated the truth you were speaking. Thank you again for showing me the light. And although I was never fortunate enough to meet you in person, I still feel personally touched by you and your message. You sowed the seeds that has begun a seismic shift in not only psychology and psychiatry, but in a world that has been suffering and on a path of self-destruction for over two centuries. I personally feel you can be proud of the contribution you made to humanity as your message begins to spread further and further throughout the world. I see that there is hope for humanity to live a life in a more fulsome way, allowing everyone the ability to reach their potential. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. For those of you who just popped in, what we're doing is you just raise your hand um, in the order that it came and we'll just let you read your letter. And we are on Greg. Greg, you're up, sir. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for doing this. Um, dear Mr. Sidney Banks, when the opportunity to write a letter to you came to my attention, I knew instantly that I wanted to participate. So here it goes. The year 2022 has just begun and I'm just shy of one year into my journey with the three principles. This is also the year, the year that I'll be turning 50, which means that I'm off to a late start, but better late than never. I can honestly say that this past year has been the most fulfilling year of my life, full of connection, learning, exploring, reinventing, and insight. Did I mention learning? There's been lots of learning. Through training programs and other 3P community events, I've had the pleasure of connecting with people all over the world, easily covering more than 10 different countries and all from the comfort of my own desk in Mississauga, Canada. What I've noticed is that we're all the same. We are one. It's a testament to the power of connection that thousands of miles apart on a Zoom call we can feel each other's love and kindness. There are a few specific things I'd like to convey to you in this letter. Firstly, the three principles are in good hands. I've had the honor of listening to recordings and attending live calls with some of the amazing people that trained with you directly. Their generosity, wisdom, and love are overwhelming. You taught them well. Best of all, these folks are mentoring the next generation of practitioners and coaches who will be carrying the mantle well into the future. Second, which you already know, dramatic pause, we're all okay. Despite a global pandemic, political divisions, climate and economic crises, we're managing just fine. It might be fair to say that the world needs the three principles now more than ever. Although I think it's a little biased as God knows, history is full of hard times. The good news is there are thousands of us awakening and learning so we can coach, teach, share and live by example. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your experiences with the world. My marriage, my relationships with my kids, with my dad, with my family and friends, and even with my dog are all deepening every day 
that I'm looking in this direction. With sincere love and gratitude, Greg Fisher. Thank you, Greg. Are there any more letters? Hey, hey Rob, hi, this is Larry. Hey, Larry. Hey, uh, you know what? I missed the part about us writing a letter. <laughs> well, then you just speak. But I, well, yeah, well, you know what? I mean, I, I'm a witness. I'm a witness to, to Greg's growth. We were in a program together with Jamie Smart, March, April, May, three months. And, uh, and I also got to do some coaching with him. And I just want to, uh, to say just his openness. Yeah, to me, he was in the perfect place. Now, I, I thought about that after interacting with him and seeing the changes that he told me that he had made. I mean, it was like dramatic and um, in certain areas. Might be simple, but I think they were major for him. Uh, so anyway, I just want, I want, to, I want to just share that and just... I'm on the path. I've got this phrase with the coaching that I'm doing, make the rest of your life the best of your life. And that's what I'm trying to do for myself. It's kind of like heard this expression of that doctor heal thyself. Man, I've got I'm 74 years old and I'm I'm still working at it. And uh, <laughs> sometimes I feel like I'm really hanging on like that cat. But it's uh I think I, I crossed the bridge with a greater understanding to help me uh, day by day, because even at this age, I made some major risks to, uh, to do what I want to do uh, to me. I mean, I feel they're major to me, so uh, I guess that's the only way I can measure it. But anyway, Greg, hey, that was, that was great. And uh, Rob, I listened to you on the uh, 3P uh, okay. Global Community Podcast and uh, you helped a whole bunch. And so, in fact, I have a, an appointment with Sam Led next Tuesday just to talk a little bit. Because like Greg, I want to talk with as many people around the world since we have this wonderful internet and telephone system and so forth. So uh, that's what I learned with, with Jamie's training and ability to talk to people in Canada and England and so forth. I'm, I'm not, I'm pitching Jamie, yeah, because this is really, Michael Neal, that was the first book and it just, grew and I saw something there and I've just, I've just been hanging on. I'm getting on the boat. <laughs> um, so thank you guys. Thank you. And I love that letter. It was real time. I love that letter, Larry. Uh, Nikon, Thomas and Melanie. Oh, we up. All right. Thailand represent. What's up? Hey, Rob. <laughs> hey, big, fa big fan of your podcast. Big fan <laughs> of you. Are we doing this later? Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, here we go. Dear Mr. Banks, I've spent most of my life working on myself and developing myself to become better, smarter, stronger, and more capable. I thought I could polish myself to become a diamond, someone that was resilient and could create value wherever he went, someone that was loved, accepted, and respected. When I was introduced to the three principles, one of the first insights that shifted the foundations of my relationship to life was that I was already whole. I was already home and that I wasn't lacking. And everything I thought that was lacking within me was only my thinking looking real to me. The truth was I was actually terrified of life and my fear had me desperately looking for answers outside of me. And no clue I ever found on the outside ever satisfied me because I was looking in the wrong direction. Now I know to look within. Today, I am less afraid of life. I am quieter within myself. I am more still. I am more patient with myself and with life. I've learned to notice life's natural rhythm and to let myself flow with that rhythm. I can hear the wisdom that pours from my heart. And thank you, Mr. Banks, for your service to humanity. And thank you for bringing together all these wonderful people together from all around the world, most of whom I now call my family. Bless you, Nikon. Pretty cool, Nikon. Thank you. Thomas, you're up. I'm not even going to pick with you. I'm lying. I'm going to pick with you, Thomas. <laughs> if y'all really have 
sit on the edge of your seat because close your eyes because the voice that's about to read this letter is like a voice you've never heard before. So here we go. I'm going to shoot up. I'm not even going to pick with you. I'm lying. I'm going to pick with you, Thomas. <laughs> if y'all ain't, if y'all really have, have sit on the edge of your seat because close your eyes because the voice that's about to read this letter is like a voice you've never heard before. So here we go. All right. He's, but I love him so much. Thank you for the build up. You have to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, you, man. Uh, <laughs> you too. And thanks so much for hosting this event. I'm really happy that I got to be here. I uh, wrote this letter a few days ago, as you know. It's a short one, so I'll just um, start. Okay. Dear Sid, as I write to you, I'm sitting in a small plane en route from Virginia Beach to Dallas, Texas. To be frank with you, Sid, the plane isn't that comfortable. If my wife's grandmother was still alive, grandfather was still alive, he would call it a puddle hopper. To my right sits a screaming infant. He can't be more than two weeks old. My goodness, though, what a set of pipes. But you know what, Sid? Despite the noise, the lack of comfort, the turbulence and the flight delay, I feel entirely well. More than that, actually, I feel a deep sense of calm equilibrium that does not match my surroundings. For showing me that there's always calm in chaos, I thank you, Sid, you taught me this truth. One year ago, my family lost an honorary member. Evelyn was my mother's best friend for 50 years and she died suddenly. For her family and my own, it shook the earth. I remember welling up in disbelief when I first heard the news. My mind began racing to try and figure it out. How could this happen? She was so healthy. What about her grandkids? What about my mom? How will she cope? Later that night, my wife and I both sat in somber disbelief. Yet, Sid, in the midst of our sadness, in a way that is hard to describe in language, I felt peace. I felt the deep still beneath the rapids. And in that moment, in the thick of despair, I had an insight. I turned to my wife and said, hopefully I can cuss Rob. I said, holy shit, our true self is always well. I can feel it. This means that our well-being is never, ever under threat. Sid, thank you for teaching my teachers. I'm eternally grateful to you. Thank you for being the catalyst that allowed me to take a vertical leap however fractional, in conscious state. If I see no more, I have glimpsed what you meant by the allness. So from an ever grateful fellow human from Tipperary in Ireland, you have my thanks. You are a light for me when all others seem dim. With love, Thomas Leamy. Melanie, you are up. Dang, that was beautiful. I love that voice, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, dear Sid, it was Saturday morning on January 9th, 2020, that I woke up. I'd been immersing myself in the missing link in Michael Neal's Coach Cafe and also watching a documentary about near-death experiences. As I lay in bed that morning, not fully awake, I felt something. I saw something and it was a truly magical experience. I saw with clarity that when we die, our consciousness lives on. I felt an immense feeling of love, acceptance, connection, and knew in that moment that everything was okay. As I lay there, I felt in awe of the vastness. I was scared to let myself fall too far into it because it was limitless. I felt like I was on the edge of space. It was a euphoric moment and I felt a strong connect connection to my mother. I wrote this in my journal, shimmers of light, a sense of feeling it, the truth. We are asleep now, 
fooled by this reality we have created. We are living in a dream of our own making. When we die is when we truly wake up. And it blows my mind to think that. That's when you start to realize what infinity really means. When we die, there is infinity. There is no time, no fear, no anguish for the future or the past. There is just presence and peace and acceptance. Truly, everything is. And this was just a moment in time and experience, but my transformation has been much more gradual than that. I've been on my path, on this path all my life, and I only realized the path I'd been walking two years ago. It just shows how guided we are and how unaware of the guidance we can be. I used to live in a world of doubt. I thought it was all on me to try and control my life and events so I could feel safe and secure. But the more I tried to do that, the less safe I felt because I couldn't control the uncontrollable. I was so scared of my experience, fearful of what might happen next, what insurmountable challenge may arise that may defeat me. I was scared of not being enough. I was scared of crumbling. And I was tired of all the struggle and effort and worry. Life was exhausting. I was living in the shadow of my thoughts and my thoughts cast a dark cloud over my life. But there was something else. There was something deep within me, a golden thread that has pulled me along. And there's also been a yearning, a desire for something more, a deep down knowing that there is something more to life than what we see on the surface. And it's this golden thread that has guided me. It's led me to where I am, to find my purpose, to find my passion, to find the answers I've searched for my entire life. In discovering the principles, I discovered freedom. I saw how my thoughts were not real. I saw how my experience fluctuates, how some days life seems impossible and others it seems so easy, like there's nothing to be done other than enjoy the moment. The principles, your discovery, Sid, has helped me understand myself better. I'm not afraid like I used to be. I know I'm on a path and that the less I interfere and struggle and stress, the easier the journey will be. I have faith where I used to have doubt. I have trust in myself that I haven't had before. I know things will work out. I don't worry. I keep putting one foot in front of the other. And I'm now learning how to dance with my golden thread. I feel like my soul is guiding me and I'm learning to listen to it. I'm learning how to harmonize the personal mind with the universal mind. I feel so blessed, so fortunate to have come across your work. I also realized something else on that morning in January 2020, and it was possibly more profound than infinity itself. I realized that it had been my life's purpose to wake up from the illusion. That insight was the thing I'd been searching for my entire life. It was my life's purpose to see what I saw in that morning. My purpose was to wake up, and in that moment, I realized that really that was everyone's purpose. Maybe we keep repeating different lifetimes until we wake up. My hope is that if I come back again, the seeds that you sowed, the traces of form that you left behind, will cross my path in every lifetime so that I may have the joy of waking up time and time again. Thank you for having the courage to share what you saw. May the ripples of your experience and my experience continue long after we are gone. With love and gratitude, Melanie. you, Mallory. I'm going to sound like a Baptist preacher here. Do we have more? Is there one more that would like to walk? Oh, we have another one. Go, Catherine. <laughs> I got you, Brother Rob. I got you. <laughs> All right. Here, let me put that down because that's... No, you did already. All right. Do it again. All right. <clears throat> Dear Sid, thank you. Thank you for the willingness to see things differently, to allow yourself to be used by life in such a beautiful and profound way. Oh, I'm having all the emotions. This, this, act, this little activity here, friends, like so touched my heart. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. <laughs> Um, I asked God for a miracle eight years ago, clarity, certainty, knowing the things that I was desperate for that I could not find and an understanding of a spiritual text 
that I had been given, but never fully understood. I was at the break point, on my knees begging for help, unwilling to build altars to personal thinking, personal thought, my heart's deepest desire to point to spiritual truth and at an utter and complete loss as to how to do it. I will do this, I told God, but you have to explain it to me in a way that I can understand. 20 minutes later, your teaching, Sid, were in my living room. It broke my heart wide open. And I was pointed, oh, the feelings of hope were real. And I was pointed in the direction of amazing mentors and teachers, those who share the understanding with such love. The journey to this moment has been the fullest expression of what it means to be human filled with all the feelings and my deepest wish my deepest longing is to have known you to have been given the opportunity to meet you and to have been able to sit with you in the richness of the silence you are my greatest teacher the one who pointed me home and gave me the words to articulate the feeling and share it with others. That space that becomes more and more real with each, each insight and revelation. There are no words to express my gratitude for what you have given me. Or you have truly shown me what it means to feel alive. All my love, Catherine. She was going to make sure we all had the emotion too, huh? Just, just, she's just going to make sure we all in here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Can't just cry by yourself. Got to make everybody else and shit cry. Okay. Catherine, way to go, baby. Way to go. No, I love that letter. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Again, I don't know if I said this. I, I did say letters to Sid, but y'all know me. I'm I'm all out of there is no form. So if if being here in the first 30 minutes or something, you just feel like there's something you would like to share in an expression of gratitude and it's not in a written letter, then then go ahead. I mean, we have a few more minutes. And if not, then cool, we'll end there and I'll just wrap up with when we'll do this again. Uh, because it's just all about about staying and getting this feeling of gratitude for the understanding. Yeah, you know, so if there's not, if there's anybody else who would like to read, Beto. I was working up the courage. I was working up the courage. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for uh, having this space, man, to uh, just to, yeah, I'm still getting over the, the lady that shared before me. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you for the people that have shared before me. Uh, Dear Sid, there are so many things that I would like to say to you. Uh, I was shocked to hear that your physical form wasn't with us. <clears throat> the beautiful and amazing things that I've noticed <clears throat> is the way that is the way that this community speaks of you. Your message of truth is carried by so many people. Now, here I am learning a concept to a way of life that has given me space and freedom to understand my thoughts. And that's not, and not put so much baggage on them or should have, could have, would have, or what ifs. Today, my thoughts can float in the space of my head and not take that negative form. Thank you, Cadence. <clears throat> and not take that negative form or become like, like the incredible Hulk that, was, that my mind was consumed by anger. I have been blessed with a new way to live thanks to your insights and more importantly, how you were able to create space create a safe space for other people to allow themselves to get out of their own way and get vulnerable enough to look at the insight and divine wisdom within within themselves you're an amazing tour guide through the through the mind and being blessed to be an amazing divine spirit that was truly awakened and shines brightly still with us today thank you sid and thank you uh 3p community for being so willing to always be willing to learn and give me space to feel safe, to get vulnerable and understand my true value. 
today this is the way this is this way of life has given me space to be a father and lead <clears throat> and break the generational trauma of uh being an absentee father i can be present for my daughter today and, and have compassion and wisdom as i move forward for that i'm eternally grateful thank you beto i don't know I don't yet. hey cadence <laughs> any more letters any more words because this um this is a an event of gratitude and, and reflection of things um around this understanding as well as um sydney banks I'm, I'm going to do one of the things that most people say did a lot of as if if we're full then you know we'll close the room and i'll share a few announcements and then we'll leave but i don't want to hold anybody any longer than necessary um, because of those amazing letters we share you will have things to to start us on our journey of the day if this is the morning for you prep you up if you're midday or even give you some peaceful uh nights to sleep on and if you're sick like one of my sisters on here i hope this this space made you feel better um we're going to do this again on February 26th. Is that the right date? Can you give me a thumbs up, Jazzy? Is that okay? Yes, February 26th. I think that's the last Friday in February, same time, eight o'clock. Um, we're going to do this again because I got I received a lot of letters that people wanted to, I received a lot of emails that people wanted to read their letter, but just couldn't make this date. So we are doing this again. So please spread the word. February 26th. Um, sign up will be the same way. Just go to the website, I'm robcook.com click the link and um, and it'll get you in the queue to receive the meeting information for our next meeting. Um, thank you all so much. Like it really, was, I, I had no idea what to expect with this event, but just, just thank you. Um, Rob, thank, thank you. you so much. It was a thank real you. pleasure. And just one question. I know you have your alignment course coming up, but, uh, I don't know if you shared something about that at the start, but would you like to share a little bit about it now? Because <laughs> I, I'm in it. February 1st called alignment, uh, which you can get through from a website. And it's just really looking at some things that help my experience of life be better when I put them in place. Like um, everything seemed to work better for me when I started from the space I was whole. I could just, it just, did something about it didn't make the experience you know like my grandmother being sick and being on the ground with alzheimer's and falling and can't get up that experience is still not one i like but because of this understanding now and going from that whole place when i experience it the love and the way i'm able to show up is significantly different than one out of fear and one out of just never wanting anything happen to the lady that raised me. Things like that, waking up to not being afraid of the experience, waking up to finding your voice, waking up to the way you want to show up in the world. Um, and that's what, the, that's what the course is about. Uh, so thank you for that opportunity. Um, yes, a couple of you here today are in that course and I'm super excited about it. I don't think I've ever been clear on anything there was going to be that I've taught so far, um, other than knowing you know, this understanding. So thank you, Thomas. And like, I, I, just in, in vain to what Larry said too, since we're here, um, they are phenomenal teachers throughout this community. So you may see me post something about a program I have or post something about somebody else program about, I, I don't care if you hear this from me or Nikon or Larry or Martin. I just need people to hear it. Like, so I just need people to hear it. I need, I need the world to wake up. Oh, I don't say I need, I would love for the world to wake up to experience in their life like we do with this understanding, you know, like we're a community. And in communities, we support, we balance, we, we help do whatever to one another. We send resources to when they're needed. This is us. And so if, for those who will come to the alignment course, once the alignment course on, I'm going to be asking you to go see people in certain things you know, and, and connect with other people. If you connect in one of these to somebody you never seen and to, man, have a conversation. That's what this is all about.
we're building our community again. So we can show it to the world and invite them in to experience it with us. I say it all the time, one team, one love, one vision, and that's to end human suffering. Have the day you deserve.